Hello there, World of Takers, and a welcome to the channel. I'm your host, the Druidals Blitz, and in today's video, I'll be playing in the FV217 Badger. This is a Tier 10 British Collector Tank Destroyer. It's a vehicle that, for many years, I hated, and I'm not even joking. I mean, you can go look at my previous videos on the Badger before 9.1, and every single one is the Badger sucks, the Badger needs a buff, I'm disappointed with it, all the way back to when I can remember first getting it. In fact, I actually had the Badger before I started making YouTube videos, and I had spent like $400 on crates to get my hands on the vehicle, and I was just so mad that it sucked for everything that it was. So... Now, after update 9.1, Wargaming completely buffed the tank to a point where it is the best tier 10 in the game. Now, obviously, that's an opinion, so I should point that out now. There are other tier 10s that you could argue are just as good, if not stronger, that you personally do better in. But for me, the Badger is my best performer, and that is why I'm calling it the best tier 10 in the game. Statistically, today alone, with the Badger, if I pull up Blitz Stars, I went 88.89% with 18 battles and averaged 3,920 damage, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. I mean, not only is the win rate crazy, but the average damage, 3,900, that is truly ridiculous average damage when you think about it. And it's not like it's a little amount of games, 18 battles is quite a decent chunk. So, I thought I would showcase two of the best battles I played in the vehicle today, so you can see just how stupid it can be. Now, both of these games are ironically on Yukon. I thought it would be funny to use both the same map for the replays, because it would just make it a bit more interesting when you do really good on the same map two times in a row. So, the enemy team has a 60 TP, a Badger, an FE-4005, an Object 268 version 4, they have a T-22 medium, a T-57 heavy, and a VK-90. Now, here's the thing you have to realize about the Badger. Yes, it has the most damage per minute in the game, right up there tied with the Object 263. Yes, it's got a lot of frontal armor, and it's even got pretty good mobility for all things considered. While it has a lot of these good attributes going for it, you need to realize that it still has downsides. First of all, it's got a huge lower plate. You don't realize how big this lower plate is, but it's big. I mean, that is a very large space to shoot at, even if you're far away. It's very large. I mean, it's not much smaller than the E100 lower plate. Second of all, the Badger has super weak rear armor that can be HE'd anywhere, and the sides are pretty easy to cut through as well. Another thing to keep in mind is that its gun is absolutely awful on its accuracy, especially on move. This tank has 0.26 on movement dispersion. Now that value to most of you is just a number that you don't really understand, but in comparison, a vehicle like the 60 TP has, I think, actually better on movement dispersion. So that's the best way I can describe it. But when you use the Badger Frontline, especially if you understand how to use it, that is when this vehicle really does well. Now, that doesn't mean you can get away with yoloing. You have to be very careful and cautious. You are a tank destroyer. You only have 2,000 hit points. So even though you have more DPM than, for example, the VK-90, the tank's got 2,700 hit points. That guy could easily just trade shots with me and win. So I'm being careful, but as you can see, I've already blocked 2,150 damage in this game. And the great thing is that I know no matter what, I will out-reload anybody that pokes me. So there you go, VK-90 pokes. He pens me for 430, but you know what? It doesn't matter, because now we get a second shell into that VK-90. So, he shot me for 430, and we've taken off, what, 800 from him? Then he bounces me, then I get another shell out. So now we've taken, what, 1,300-ish hit points off his vehicle, and oh boy, let's go for another shell, 575 max roll. Now we have dealt the exact same damage dealt as we've blocked, which is actually something quite funny I just noticed. So we're going to get a nice slap into the Object 268 version 4. Unfortunately, the tracking actually spun him into flossy but because we're a tank destroyer we can very easily pen right through the v4's lower plate even with rammer this is one of the best things that the badger has going for it is really good pen as you can see because of that i can butter through enemy armor like no problem we're up to 4460 damage dealt 4000 360 damage blocked. You can see it's just back and forth. So now we're going to wait for this Badger to turn towards Flossie, get a nice HE in. Flossie pens him, but man, what a low roll from Flossie there. We're going to aim in on his lower plate and boom! Well, not his lower plate, sorry, the rear back plate on his tank. We're up to 5,230 damage dealt. But we're not done yet. That's still quite a healthy 60 TP. 
And obviously, with our 60 to A being AFK, and I have all of this DPM, we should just easily be able to push on the 60s. So here we go. One nice shot into his tank. We're just going to drive right up to his vehicle. Is he even going to be able to pen me? I guess we'll find out, but it doesn't really matter. Because again, I can just butter right through his upper plate, having 10 degrees of gun depression. And this 60 is, uh, well, he's not having a lot of fun, is he? So we're going to aim in once again. He doesn't even get the shell out. And we've dealt 6,324 damage. What a stupid battle. This game very easily illustrated how you can use the badger to just maul the enemy to pieces. I mean, it is such an easy tank to absolutely annihilate him. So, let's take a look at the second game on Yukon. This time, bit of a different lineup. Actually, almost a completely different lineup. We got a Batchat, Chieftain Mark VI, FE2 and 5B183, IS4, Yag, M48, Patton, and an object, 268. Now, the last battle you witnessed, we positioned the Badger specifically in a spot to hide our lower plate. The Badger's armor on the upper superstructure is very strong, over 300, but the lower plate is weak, so I hid my lower plate basically like this, and the enemy could not penetrate me. But this game, we're going to use one of the other great attributes of the vehicle, and that is its gun depression. 10 degrees of gun depression and 20 degrees of gun elevation. That makes it a very flexible tank on almost any ridgeline. I sound like a marketing person for a war game right now. The Badger is a tank that you should buy. Blah, 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 blah. Honestly, if the Badger comes out for a cheap price tag, I will definitely suggest to buy it because it's just such a fantastic vehicle. So, as you can see, in this battle here, I'm positioning my Badger in a way that I can hide my lower plate. So this IS-4 is aiming at us like this, where my lower plate is completely hidden. Now, I do have to be careful because when using the Badger, as you can see that IS-4 actually managed to connect that shell into us, you have to be a little careful. You don't realize from my point of view, but the lower plate is actually being shown here. But there's not much I can do about that. There is there. I mean, we're aiming basically at the lowest we can aim at an IS-4. But again, as you can see, that IS-4 can actually see our lower plate at this angle. So while you may think your lower plate is hidden in the Badger, it's a very large spot and you have to be careful when showcasing it. Especially because you have so much gun depression, you don't realize that you're actually exposing your lower plate. So, already we're up to 1,280. Pretty nice, especially with us firing premium ammo as well. This 183 is uh, not enjoying our company all too much. I'm going to go for another shell into this 183. And Flossie finishes him off with a nice clip into his vehicle. We got the Mark VI and the IS-4 in front of us. Again, we get a nice shell into the IS-4. And with that, we are already over 2,200 damage. You don't realize how fast this thing rolls up the damage numbers until you've really just rolled up the damage numbers. So there you go. Another nice shot into the IS-4. And with that, I mean, this guy is just bedonkered. We're going to aim it on his upper plate, which again, we can very easily do. Finish him off. 2,800 damage dealt. Now we have the Chieftain Mark VI off to the side, and you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some nice damage into his vehicle. So, we shoot one shell at him. As I said, the on-movement dispersion is quite terrible. So we actually miss that shell. And we also get hit by the 268, which means I've got 580 health, which is not good, because the 268 can actually finish us off with one shell. I also see that there's a red arrow behind me, which is a Boss Chateau 25 ton. I know that the Bat Chat's out of ammo, but I also know that he's going to try and tunnel me if he can. So, I watched the 268 shoot. I know that he's not my biggest threat, so I'm going to back up this way. That way, the 268 is going to reload, yes, but now I have the opportunity to angle towards him, as you can see. And boom, we get a perfect bounce from his heat shell. He didn't manage to finish us off. And with that, now we've got our adrenaline on. So we've got upwards of 4,500 DPM. I get a nice shell into the enemy object 268, and I'm able to turn quick enough just so that this enemy bat chat cannot pen me. We wiggle, we wiggle. Oh, he fires a heat shell and doesn't finish me off with it. And there you go. I get a perfect bounce. 5,250 damage dealt. And we're still alive with 10 health left. This here is just one of the many battles where I was able to non-stop push with the Badger, absolutely wreck the enemy, and showcase why it is such a darn strong vehicle. Personally, I believe that the Badger is uh, just the best tier 10. I mean, you have to understand how to use it, and it's a very unique playstyle. But once you understand how to use it, holy moly, is this an incredibly strong vehicle. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. And if you'd like to see more like it, please consider smashing that subscribe button down below. Bye-bye.